So how many takes do you normally do when you're at home and you're making your, your you know? How, like what maybe, normal? Maybe, maybe two. Wow. So are you, will you rehearse it like 30 times? No. 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 I just, I'm too tired and I want to get into my garden. <laughs> No, I, I, I know I have, um, I have a really good system down and I, I, you know, look at it, I think about it and I make my choices. And I also, um, just do, yeah, you just do, you just make the choices that you feel are right to commit to that and overthinking things in, for me, just it takes up time and energy and I, I, I'd rather just, you know, and my choices might be wrong and that's fine. But if it's, but if the work, if like you say, if they see something in your work and they go, okay, this choice wasn't necessarily right, but, but this, the essence of what this actor is bringing to the character is, then that will give you an opportunity to hopefully have a callback and you can discuss those things. Or sometimes you just get cast off of your tape. Talent Talk is sponsored by Company of Rogues Actors Studio, New York-style training for actors at all stages of their journey. With our part-time classes and full-time masterclass program, Rogues provides a unique post-secondary option under the guidance of working professionals. Mentoring and developing professional film and theater artists since 1993, Calgary's longest-running independent studio offers practical hands-on classes in a positive, supportive environment. Check us out at corogues.com. Company of Rogues passionate about the art of acting. Welcome to Talent Talk. I'm your host, Chingaze. Today we have an extra special show. Extra special, why? Because I'm a fan of the guest. And it's going to be weird, but that's okay. You stick around anyway. So, uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank some of our sponsors. This is our fifth season, and our sponsors are Company of Rogues, Six Degrees, Workflow Film, RJ Talent, uh, Heard of One, Counting Coup Indigenous Film Academy, and Actra Alberta. So, thanks guys for supporting the arts. Or whatever this is. Anyway, so today, our guest is Miss Gabrielle Miller. Uh, she is, uh, well, she's an actor and uh, award-winning. She's got a couple of those Leos, some Geminis, um, and um, yeah, let's figure out what is she doing on this show. So please, help me welcome Miss Gabrielle Miller. Yay! Hi! Oh, Hi, Chingaze. How are you? I am very well, Gabrielle. Um, I've noticed right off the top that you are close to your camera. It's all you. And I'm here a little bit safer. I'm a little I, bit safer. No, don't you oh, dare. Man. Don't you dare no, move. I, I didn't set this up, and uh, I could push my chair back a little. Don't you dare push your chair back. <laughs> uh, I tried pushing my chair back two days ago. And it's got four casters, and, but I guess I didn't realize I have soft carpeting in my room. This is a show about me, sorry. And, oh, no. And then there's a piece of plastic where you can roll, you know, you can't roll <laughs> on shag carpet. And it, it, one of the wheels is off, and then I was off the chair. Oh, no. And it's an age. I hurt my shoulder for like three days. It, that's like a two I foot. Understand. It's no. a two foot drop on shag carpet. What is going on? Okay, look at I picked up an iris root ball a couple of years ago. Mind you, I, I did have a back injury and couldn't walk properly for like two weeks. <laughs> it's a root ball. It's it's nothing. Not where irises are. They're good for about three days and then they're yeah. useless. I know. Do you cut those things back? What do you just leave them? I cut the stalks back. Okay. I leave the green because it feeds the bulb. Oh. And that goes for all bulbs. Like if you have tulips or daffodils and they die back, mm -hmm. the flower itself dies back, cut the flower stem, but leave the leaves to die back because that feeds the bulb for the next year's growth. Oh, wow. Uh, just information, guys. And you're getting it here for free. Uh, now, we have <laughs> a lot of tulips in the house because uh, I think the wife got frightened by a Dutch master once. 
And, uh, well, she took art, you know, in school. <laughs> She's educated. I'm not. It matter. Um, she doesn't bring it up uh, every week, but she does. So, Gabrielle, what... Um, I, uh, sorry, I got distracted. I see that we're recording this. How did you agree? <laughs> how, did you, how and why did you agree to uh, to coming here and doing this? Did uh, has Gary, my boss, has he blackmailed you or someone you love? You know what? I won't speak of that. Um, no, I came because I was excited to chat with you guys, and um, I was so happy to have just done the project that I did with Ben Emanuel. And so, yeah, I don't, I, I honestly, I, I don't often do interviews. Um, but I was very happy to, to do this and to get to chat with you and talk well, about. Uh, yeah, exactly. Not me, but about the project. And I get it. Um, <laughs> we, we're, we're in the entertainment industry now. So, uh, your, so the project, the title of the project, have we landed on the title? Is the title the title? I don't know, actually. And that's something okay. that I probably should have asked Ben before okay. today. I'm not sure. <laughs> because I know it it was, or the working title, or the almost title was Have Hope, Yo. Yes. Right? Now, what mm -hmm. we're going to do is this is, uh, this is how we're going to fix this. I'm just going to say, um, so the show, something, 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 look at that. Cut point. Oh. That's amazing. God, you guys are, you guys have all the tricks. Yeah. Now, if my post-it notes were green, it'd be perfect. Uh, <laughs> then I could maybe have a Tom Selleck. And oh, or like, yeah, stuff. or a cat mouth or a little, oh, you could put a like a dancing, mouth. you know. Tulip. A dancing cat mouth. Yeah. Hmm. No. 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 Okay. Uh, Gabrielle, you went a little far. You went a little far. I now, apologize. I told, I was told by your handlers to rein you in. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Ben Emanuel. It almost sounds like his name rhymes to me. It or if it doesn't rhyme, it's musical. Can you say that Isn't musically? It? It's lovely. Yeah. Doesn't it sound? It does. It's a lovely name. Yeah. Well, he was kind enough to uh, do one of these with uh, Mr. Gary McLean. Um, and yes. And yes, I do want to actually talk about that project a little bit, if you don't mind. Can you tell me a bit about it, other than the title? Well, yeah, years ago now, we started, oh my goodness, I think in 2019, correct me if I'm wrong, I got a call from Ben, I was not, I was here, and um, he said, listen, I'm thinking of developing this project, and and um, it centers around um, COVID and people's reactions to it and what everybody's going through. And it's also kind of a collaboration with, with some of the younger people that he works with. And, um, I was like, great. But I'm Ben and I have been friends and colleagues for like, I don't know, probably 30 years or 25 years. We've known each other for a very long time. When he was more and of an he, actor, right? When you, you well, yeah. And he still is. I mean, we, oh. he, yeah, he still does. He just does everything. He like okay. writes, directs, teaches, acts. He's oh. kind of like one of those people that are ridiculously kind of all around talented in many different ways. But yeah. anyway, he's like, he is one of my favorite people, just generally speaking, and one of my favorite people to work with. We collaborate really well together. And um, so I was very excited. We started it back then in 2019 and, and um just finished it, which I think is really beautiful because there's this long kind of journey with these characters and um, yeah, so. Okay. Um, I have worked on a project where it took five years and a project where it took six years to, to complete, but those were financial, uh, uh, you know, issues. Reasons. Right. And I was like, oh good, I could now play my uncle. Perfect, why don't we just do that? Um, I'm sure that's not what happened with you. So uh, <laughs> I can now play my okay. uncle. <laughs> okay, so that's so it deals with with people dealing with COVID. That's I, you cool. know what, maybe that's just I. The world. He probably would have been so much more succinct or po uh, better at describing. Yes, I mean, there's it's just it's character driven, and it. I am I play a, a therapist. Okay. And um. Do you wear glasses in it? No. <laughs> no. That type of therapist. Okay, good. Sorry, I always have glasses questions for... Uh, please continue. Right. 
uh, yeah, anyway, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it was exciting and it was really just special to kind of have that, that time. Okay. Working on something. Did you, uh, did you instantly sort of know the character or did you, you know, did you have to sort of get into it or did you just like know her on off the page? No, I, I, it, I mean, that's funny. I did have to kind of get into it and Ben was really, Ben was really clear on just some of the physicality that he wanted um, from this character. And that was really helpful to me um, in just more of her stillness. I mean, you see her with her clients mm -hmm. and then you see her in her life at home privately. And there's quite a difference between the two realities of Pamela. <laughs> Um, yeah. and I think that, I think that goes for, for all of the characters anyway. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty interesting for therapists, you know, cause I, I personally, I don't trust them. That's just me. Right. Uh, our family has a long history of not, not, uh, trusting doctors. I don't do, you, know do you have a lot of therapists in your family? Is that why? <laughs> no, I think we just had a lot I, of That was a joke, everybody. I love, I love you all. I love you therapists. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll just cut that out. Um, yeah. No, no, that's, I, I like that. I, I also like the idea of, I mean, there's some, what is it, Jason Siegel TV show where he, I, I forgot what it's called. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. What's it called? You know, him and Harrison Ford. Yeah. And actually, yeah. everyone is really good in that cast. It's just, they're the only two I remember their names. Oh, no. Well, it doesn't matter. And the girl from Drew Carey. She's great. But, uh, but that shows how on and focused he sort of is in his professional thing. And then the life is just this broken sort of thing. So I, I do like that. Uh, I mean, it's scary. It is scary. It'd be like watching a film about a, a surgeon or something, you know, but then he drinks a lot after, after work. You just don't want to know that, but we sort of have to. You know that old skit, who is it? My mind is just, and he comes in the bar and he's like, it'll be late for my, Flight and he's the pilot. It turns out that do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, of course. Sure, sure, sure. I don't know about the skit though. I've heard it as a joke. Oh. Um, I mean, that sounds like that really seems like a Harvey Corman, Tim Conway. To, that seems like a Carol Burnett kind of like I could see it almost, but yeah, no, that's it. Anyway, you're gonna have to cut this out too because I don't have proper information for you. Sorry. Well, no, we really do like talking to uh, uh, people about projects they're not in. Right. <laughs> so that's really our. Uh... So tell me, how many episodes of the Rockford Files have you watched? Ah, <laughs> uh, the Rockford Files. God, that was a great that show. A good I love that show. <laughs> you know what made me think of it actually is the tape deck, the start of it, where you'd hear what a great intro to a show. You'd hear uh, someone calling him up and all the problems he were dealing with. You know, like this is, is that the how thing. They start? They started with beautiful mic oh. post music, and then the tape deck would go. And he I like it. that. That's intriguing. It's You're brilliant. like, hey, I'm hearing your voice. I'm hearing about your problems. Let's yeah. find out who yeah. you are. It was yeah. because of it was because that you have a landline. It, yes, I have a landline. That's probably why my brain went to that phone. Um, goodness. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions for me? No, it's okay. How? <laughs> anyone in your family uh, in the arts? No, mm. no. What am I saying? My brother is an incredible photographer. Um, it doesn't count. Photography doesn't count. Sorry. That's, that's that, not art. Um, <laughs> no, no, not really. But they're all very, very artistic people. Okay. Like creative and yeah, but not as not as careers, except for my brother. Okay. So who um, so who gave you the green light? Who said in your family, people who are supposed to love you and protect you? from this ridiculous and absolutely ridiculous one chance in a million who said oh go ahead well this story some people may have already know this story but my mother and i had a house cleaning business when i was like probably 16 years old we rode our bikes around white rock it was called have broom will travel and we cleaned what did you dress <laughs> up i'm sorry <laughs> Did you, did you guys dress up? Have broom will travel. Okay, sorry. No, and I didn't even I didn't even understand the reference. It was a show, right? Called well, 
I mean, uh, it, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's a show. I mean, it feels like um, Bewitched. It feels like Half Gun Will Travel. That's what it was based on. Half Gun Will Travel. Oh, okay. That was that was a cute reference uh, that I I don't know the show. My mom named us. But pretty good Have, show. Weird. I yeah. spoke to someone about Have Gun Will Travel yesterday. No way. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Imagine and, that. I. Um, yeah, so we we were doing really well. We were busy, and I had always loved acting. And we were cleaning this lovely house. And this is such a sad story. Um, there was a, a had been a sleepover with girls from my school, <clears throat> and they were like cooking pancakes and having their party. And I was cleaning her ensuite, and it really just made me feel just funny i mean because socially we go to school together and then i was i was there it was just weird for me and so not that there's anything wrong with cleaning houses it's totally a great job when you're um, 16 yeah there is. My, there well, is. Yeah. When you're 16. So we, absolutely so we left and my mom could tell that it had kind of upset me a little bit and mm -hmm. she said listen sweetheart i know that um that you have dreams and that there's things that you want to focus on. And the way life goes is if we're doing well, this is a great job. There's nothing wrong with it. But if we keep doing this, you're going to wake up and 20 years will have gone by and you're still going to be cleaning houses. So if you want to pursue acting, you really need to start doing it now and be focused on it because this is, this is life. Life, life keeps going, right? Mm -hmm. And you get comfortable with something and then, it's it's harder to to make that transition. Not that you can't always like you're always growing. It doesn't matter how old you are. But it was good advice. I took it, and uh, that's how I started. Wow, moms always yeah, she's always a great mom. always there, right? Yeah, when they can be always there yeah. in some capacity. Do you do do you audition for stuff anymore, or do you just take? I meetings? audition. I audition for every single thing. Why? What is wrong with those people? I I think that that's just part of the job, right? I want to look. It. Mm, I just don't believe that. I just it bothers me. Can, okay? please, can you talk to some people and just say call a game up and just give her the job? I get that thing. I, I've done a doctor about fourteen times, and if someone is looking for a doctor, I'm like, watch these movies. Yeah, yeah. You could you it well. There you, know you go. Me? Yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like just what is wrong with you? Let's just, <laughs> you know, if you've got some new person, run them through the ringer. You know, I, I don't know. Anyway, so, well, I guess, um, do you like auditioning? You seem to. No. No. Okay. No. Do you get very nervous? No. no, I don't get nervous. I, uh, well, now we, we do a lot of our auditions on tape. No. And uh, to be honest, in the room, I really do enjoy it sometimes when you're able to work with the director and sure. that's, that's helpful because you can get maybe some insight um, into what they're looking for, which mm -hmm. is great. I also am a very shy person, to be honest. I'm not a really social person. So yeah, I'm not like going into the room at first always does make me feel a little nervous and I'm just not, it's so funny because I've been doing this for a really, really long time. And uh, I'm still not, yeah, like I don't love going and auditioning, but I do, sorry, but I do enjoy it when you have a nice connection and you get to get some work done. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. And taping is, is wonderful. It's very easy, right? Taping is different. Yeah. Do you, um, in the room getting redirected, I, I mean, I think that's kind of what you're talking about. You get to see a little bit of Maybe it isn't what you what you saw on the page. Maybe it's something different. Right. But for for myself, it doesn't happen very often, but I would never take the time to be like they're like, oh right, you're doing this, but actually what you're doing is you're lying to her. And you're like, Great, let's go again. Never taking do you know what I mean? Never taking like a minute to be like, What does that mean? Like what am I oh. you know? Do you mean do you mean like in your own mind, taking the minute to process the information or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're like, okay, right. hey, try well, to that... this. Oh, we lost you a little bit. Oh, there you are. It just looks like you're thinking. And I love that. Uh, but we, uh, 
I wouldn't take the <laughs> time. Very often. Yeah. No. You know what? I think like I you're trying to show off. Like you're trying to show off. You know what I mean? Like Sorry, say that again. Like you're trying to show off. Like you're trying to be like, of course I can do it. I can do it again. And it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you it's stupid. But yeah. really taking the time. Uh, this is a good conversation. I'm going to remember that because taking the time to digest or try and understand mm -hmm. what it is they're, they're saying, if you are nervous or feeling whatever, sometimes your brain doesn't pause to actually right. go, what is, what does this mean? And that's really important, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to getting... Absolutely. To getting across whatever it is that they're asking you to to adjust. Also, asking a good question has helped. I, I know we've we've asked yeah. questions in the room where they're like, oh, you know what I mean? No one's asked that. Or, oh, they didn't think about it or something. And you can, the, 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 for me, I, I'm a terrible auditioner, but it was, um, if you had one minute before the audition started, like there was some camera problem. You went in and oh sorry, I'm gonna, and you get to say a joke or you get to say something about something, that usually hooked them. Or at the end, um, you had just thirty seconds more than because they asked you something. Right. I love that shirt. Where did that something that where'd you get that shirt? And you're like, oh, it's something. And you just give them one bit of information about your life very quickly. You don't linger. Right. And that was the only hope I ever had was to to, you know, to to get that job where they're like, terrible audition, but man, there's something there. There's something we can probably work with. See, that's yeah. lovely. That the, that's about I think being open to expressing who you are as a person, right? And yeah. How um how often do you? Uh, this is boring. How uh that's a boring question. How often? How? Gee, sorry, Chin. <laughs> oh, not a boring answer. It's not a boring question. Uh, you she doesn't listen. No. Uh, <laughs> Again, you know, thank you so much for doing this. I'm, I'm, thank you. Um, oh, thanks for having me, man. I am such a fan. Uh, I'm just so, you know what I mean. And here's the weird thing: is this is going rather smooth because I know on your end you're like he's a little all over the place, dude. You should watch some of the other interviews. This is I'm just great. Like, I'll just pull toys off my wall. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm doing good today. You're doing wonderful. No, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm telling you. <laughs> but. Um, well, oh, so how many takes do you normally do when you're at home and you're making your, your, you know, how like maybe, normal? Maybe, maybe two. Wow. So are you, will you rehearse it like 30 times? No. 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 I just, I'm too tired and I want to get into my garden. <laughs> no, I, I, I know I have, um, I have a really good system down and I, I, you know, look at it, I think about it and I make my choices. And I also, um, just do, yeah, you just do, you just make the choices that you feel are right to commit to that and overthinking things in, for me, just, it takes up time and energy and I, I, I'd rather just, you know, and my choices might be wrong and that's fine. But if it's, but if the work, if like you say, if they see something in your work and they go, okay, this choice wasn't necessarily right, but, but this, the essence of what this actor is bringing to the character is, then that will give you an opportunity to hopefully have a callback and you can discuss those things. Or sometimes you just get cast off of your tape. Right. But I, I just don't, I don't like to not it's making it sound like I don't care or I'm not doing my best. I am. I just don't like to. I think sometimes if you overthink things and take a ton of takes for me, it muddles it all up and it's not precise. You know what I mean? Right. So. Yeah. I wouldn't even know how to choose if you went over it. Like I do four. I'll do four. That's great. And, yeah, I... and sometimes I do four. Like it, okay. it depends. Right. Yeah. I always send the third one in, which is some superstitious nonsense. Oh, okay. I don't know why, but it's usually the third one. I'm just like, there you go. Um, but okay, interesting. Hmm. I was just hoping there was a time and a place someone could get to who is known, um, who has done a, a, a large body of work that they'll just get phone call. You know, just get a phone call like, hey, man, are you free with? Anyway. Well, it does. I mean, that does happen once in a while, but very rarely. Like it, it okay. generally speaking. Like, it, like Ben. Ben, Ben screen tested you, right? No. Yeah. No, like, like Ben, Ben. Sure. Yeah. And that's that like Ben and like a few other people that, 
that, and that's a really lovely feeling people that you love working with. And that's independent filmmaking too, right? Because it's so, it's such a business and that's a big part of it is that there's so many people who have decision-making power and they, they, you know, different wants. And so this idea of when I'm able to, and I'm offered a project that's more, has more autonomy from the filmmaker, that mm-hmm. is so exciting to me that, cause that's what I really love to do. I really love to just be able to do the work. And there's, there is sometimes more freedom in those kind of projects, obviously, because you aren't part of a bigger kind of, machine right absolutely absolutely um the projects might be more interesting and you might be more of a collaborator a collaborator as well it's like yeah. twofold um you, you strike me as a person who sort of likes uh who enjoys uh learning things is that part of the do you is one of the things you like about acting uh just learning a different you know what i mean a different skill or anything that part yes of yes and i and and you know I was such an incredibly painfully shy child and my acting classes were a place where I could become somebody else and kind of live experiences that, that were outside of who I was, which was very interesting to me. And yes, I love learning about people. I love watching people. I, I think that, that just being human is like an incredible, (laughs) incredible, difficult experience. And telling stories is so special, right? Like being able to tell stories that connect Mm -hmm. um, people to their own emotions or their own experiences is like, I think that's a really big gift when you get to do it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that gift. Uh, uh, That's the buttering up part. Now for the hard stuff. No. Um, (laughs) Can I ask what's, what's next? It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible. Uh, I honestly, I I don't know what's next. Okay. Because we're in a moment of, um, you know, the strike is happening right now, and um, and I obviously completely support that, and I I I just I have my brain has not been on. I just know that we're kind of. I, on a little bit of a break and that's fine with me because I, I just really just get to be in the garden for the next few weeks, which is lovely because we're home. And honestly, that's where I'm the happiest. So that sounds terrible. I should be more motivated, but, um, it's hard to, yeah, I just, I'm taking a break kind of not a long one, but you know, sometimes breaks are thrust upon you. That's for the other viewers. Uh, not for you. Um, did you have any mentors when you were kind of uh, coming up? Or do you still have? Well, I went to... Oh, sorry, I didn't, sorry, I didn't write mentors. I, I wrote men, Mentos, the fresh... <laughs> if you ever have any Mentos commercials? No, no, please go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I went to the I went to the Peter Breck Academy and he was really wonderful to me. And um I Nancy, I mean Nancy Van Gogh, my agent, my bank my agent in Vancouver, we have been together since I was like I think 17 or 16 years old. Um and then, you know, we just have like we have a really great community of people that that actors and film you know, people that have all kind of been together for like over 20 years. So okay. that's it. Um, yeah. All right. Hey, what um, I guess you, I was going to ask you if there's any kind of character you wouldn't do, but maybe it's also what what's something that you would really love to try? Maybe you haven't gotten a, a chance at yet. I think it would be fun for me to experience playing a character um, who is um, I think I think I'd like to do uh, a, a drama that where I can build a character like a like a series where you could actually live with that character for a little while you know what I mean because yeah. As as we all know, actors like you, if you're doing a lot of 
guest spots and stuff like that, you come into a situation where people have had time to develop their characters and work together and know the crew. And that for me, those relationships, having time to like get to know the people that you work with is really valuable. And also just getting to know your character and being able to live with somebody for a little while. I love that. Um, and we don't do that very much, right? A lot of the time you're just coming in for one or, or two episodes or a few days on something and you or just- one or, or one or two lines. Just exactly. to the hard doctor word and then leave. That's that. And you know what? I don't know how you feel about this, Chingis, but I think that those those roles are are like the in a way the most difficult, mm. right? Because you have to embody this whole person and character and be believable, and you don't have a lot of time to do it. So so I have a lot of um like when I do those kind of roles where you're, you're like, okay, I've got to, you know, come across as, as very comfortable in the skin of this person, um, but, but not have a lot of time with them. It's, that's a, that's a tough job. And I think it's, it's a little, I don't awesome. think there are any easy jobs though. No. I don't think there's any easy jobs. There just aren't. No. I remember starting out as an extra for the first two or three years uh, and, and thinking it was fun, but you're just like, it's 14 hours. You're standing in the mud. People are, <sighs> there's horses running by you and there's like yeah. explosions. Uh, is this a union thing? Will anyone protect me if I lose my finger? Yeah. You know, but none of it's, I mean, none fun, of it's easy. yes, but not fun. easy. Yeah. N none of it's easy. I've, yeah. Anyway. Um, Miss Gabrielle, we are hitting the amount of time. Even if I remove all the times where I talked about myself, uh, we're don't you dare. I have to, no, I have to, this is about you. How is it uh, now? I'll say the show. How is it coming back for either the? How how far was the film removed from the series versus the cartoon? Because the cartoon felt a lot later. But yeah, how I far think, was the movie. Let's say. Oh uh, man, I Ish. think that was twenty fifteen. Okay. So like six years. I could and please forgive me if I'm wrong on this. I think that was six years, and then. I think the series, the the um, cartoon, I think started in like 2016 or 17. Right. Okay. I think that was a little bit later. Uh, what was yeah. it like revisiting the uh, for either of those? Great. Going back to, yeah. Just like, yeah. did it take any time to drop it back into zero? Yeah. Zero. I love those people so much. It just breaks my heart how much I freaking love them. And we, it's been like I think over 20 years now right since we first got from together start, and started the start of it yeah yeah probably yeah so yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. yeah. my brain is saying 2003 but I, I don't know why no I think you're right 2002 yeah something like that yeah yeah uh we still have we still have the video story so. oh <laughs> did you and the funny thing is you guys shot a scene I wish I could remember who was in the scene but we, our, our store was downtown Calgary. It was on 4th Street and 19th Avenue. So sort of where the Red Mile is, very close. Yeah. Hockey fans. And um, also for hockey fans, uh, at, we'll have to, no, um, forget it. <laughs> forget no, that part. Nope. No. <laughs> um, so they shot a scene across the street and one street over, and we could actually see it where someone opened the door. And I think, the, you know, one or two of the police officers came to the door. There was a gas In station. Calgary? There. Yeah, it was totally in Calgary, and it was for the series. Uh, and I was just like, "What the heck are they doing there?" And they're like, "That's Corner Gas." I'm like, "What?" Anyway, eh. that's so weird. I have no memory. Uh, I don't know if you were in it, but <laughs> but I'm surprised I didn't remember that we shot that that we shot something in Calgary. That's cool. Yeah, yeah we'll search it. We'll search it and see if it if it makes the search cut. It. It'll be yeah. here. <laughs> not, it'll just be a picture of my face going. <laughs> you. Uh, have been a delight first of all sorry i came at it with both hands there and i just did it again um jazz hands it's my dad my dance background Jingaze. <laughs> spirit fingers and, and jazz hands nice um okay were you doing the back too see i blinked I like... oh you're voguing i was voguing <laughs> yeah wow uh if we need a slide whistle we need something that was the that was the weirdest like honky tonking uh uh it seemed very western uh, the, my okay. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like i don't know well i didn't care for it at all <laughs> what a terrible way to end the show oh my 
my goodness. It's terrible. My apologies. My apologies to you and my apologies to your viewers. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. thank you. You seen my purple kazoo? Do you have what? No, seriously, this is very funny. My my husband's doing um some Shakespeare right now and we were laughing so hard because we never have had that sentence said in our house. Do you know where the purple kazoo is? <laughs> do, do, do. Anyway. <laughs> Well, what's he? What's he do? If you don't mind me asking, what's he? He's an actor as well. He's an oh, actor cool. and an audiobook narrator. Oh, nice! Is yeah. he always gargling those people? Oh, the voice stuff. Yeah. No, no. no? Okay. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Well, continued success to him and yourself. And thank you, uh, to you, and thank you. I really you. enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you for doing this. Now stick around just for a minute after we stop, uh, after we end. I'm gonna throw back to the actual camera and do my outro okay. and you'll notice, oh, if you thought the intro was good. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, uh, anyway, thank you again. Thank you. Yes, okay. <laughs> hey guys, uh, uh, thank you so much for watching this show. That was Gabrielle Miller. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Gary will be here because I'll be elsewhere. Bye.